Hey everyone, welcome to part six of the Rapture Ready Challenge. Are you ready? We will be completing chapter 21 of Luke in this video and as we get further into the end of these of this particular chapter I hope that by studying our Heavenly Father's Word and the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ as we have found in when he teaches on topic and subject I hope that those that should watch this video that are following the pre-trib rapture doctrines I hope that they will read line by line and look at the translations in the full meaning and definitions of the words that have been transferred into the English to fully understand what is being spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ to me at the more that I read it the more convinced that I and I know without a doubt that his word is true I can say it all day long and that if someone does not wish to see it if they do not wish to believe it if they wish to believe this rapture doctrine then they're not going to see it the only way to remove the veil is to take it to prayer before our Heavenly Father and ask for his discernment if you truly earnestly in your heart want to know the truth and you want your eyes to be fully aware of God's truth take it to prayer he can reveal this to you but only he can do this no amount of teaching or or reading from anyone else is not going to provide that truth only he can provide that truth with that said let us say a prayer before our Heavenly Father I ask you Heavenly Father that all eyes be opened and ears can hear what is written in your word the words that our Lord Jesus Christ has so plainly and meticulously explained to us how it will be in these end times and about his second advent at his return we thank you father for these precious words of truth I just pray that others will take the time to study your word in detail and in depth that they may not be deceived in Jesus name amen verse 25 and there shall be signs in the Sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring we're going to see signs there will be signs is ceremonial or supernatural miracles in the ray the Sun is the ray or implication light and the moon and the stars constellations put for a single star natural or artificial and upon the earth distress restraint anxiety of nations races people with perplexity a state of quandary to have no way out that is be at a loss mentally stand in doubt be perplexed and the sea if you go in and read Revelation 17 the sea is the people the stress of nations is different races and people the sea is usually that's what it refers to and the waves it says the vibration is like a billow this is to wag as a dog its tail fawningly that is generally to shake disturb move so this vibration is going to be a fawning fawning over what what could that be couldn't be the false Christ yeah it's the false Christ Satan the Antichrist in Revelation 17 15 
it talks about the, it's shown him the waters here but it's the sea it said the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues and if you're wondering it says here a whore is talking about his trumpet it says figuratively an idolater our Heavenly Father leads us by example and he compares idolatry to harlotry being a whore prostitute that's it's the same feelings to him to him idolatry is is like our feelings would be toward an unfaithful spouse that's his feelings and that's how he tries to teach us and while we're here I want to go back up to verse 5 and you can see the different scriptures on the side task over here that go back to this harlots fornication that's what it's talking about and upon her head was a name written mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and when we look at mystery it means to shut the mouth quote a secret or mystery through the idea of silence imposed by initiation into religious rites the very name isis goes back to mystery the the mystery of cults and babylon babylon means confusion that's what the word babel means and that's what babylon stands for so we have mystery confusion it's mystery religious confusion the great and the mother now we're talking about the mother load now of the harlots and abominations of the earth abominations goes back to a detestation that is specifically idolatry and our heavenly father hates idolatry he is that i mean you can go back to leviticus 11 and i mean he will flat tell you the things that he considers to be an abomination detests them abhors them and all these different false religions and false doctrines have all have all come from one source one source and his name is satan he is the ultimate he is the first sinner he's the ultimate whore of all whores all false religions all of that comes from one entity and he's going to be cast back onto the earth from Revelation 12 we learn this and he's gonna to pretend to be Jesus he's gonna be look like the lamb and speak as a dragon we've been warned about this entity and interesting we can go over here and look at this mystery about in 2nd Thessalonians 2 7 for the mystery of inequity do with already work only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way and I've heard doctrine made on this saying that God's Holy Spirit's going to be removed from the earth during the time of Satan's tribulation where they get that I have no clue don't even want to try to figure that one out but whole doctrines it's just amazing uh, the confusion Babylon we live in Babylon or I've even heard people claim that uh, Babylon the Great is the United States. If you really want to know who this Babylon is, all you have to do is just read down a little further. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And it says down here at the bottom, and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. What city holds the blood of the prophets? Where was our Lord Jesus Christ crucified? We can go to Revelation 11. It will tell us. In verse 8, 
the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Jerusalem. And for the document, you can go up and read Matthew 23. I mean, right from the blood of righteous Abel down to the, our Lord Jesus Christ, the righteous blood. He says in verse 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophet and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Verse 38, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Desolate now. It's lonesome. It's a wilderness, solitary, waste. Verse 39, For I say unto you, Ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. This happens at the seventh trump. Matthew 27, verse 45, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. This is when our Lord Jesus Christ was on the cross. Verse 26, Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Men's hearts, it's countenance, man face, that's the human being, that's, that's flesh men. Their hearts failing them to breathe out, that is faint. Forcible respiration to chill, wax cold for fear. To be put in fear, alarm, or fright, be afraid exceedingly. And for looking after apprehension by implication, infliction anticipated, expectation, looking after those things which are coming on the earth. This is saying to supervene, that is, arrive, occur, impend, attack, figuratively, influence. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And for it states, assigning the reason or a reason, the powers or the force, specifically miraculous power. It's power, strength, violence, or wonderful work of heaven is through the idea of elevation is the abode of God. By implication, happiness, power, eternity, specifically the gospel, Christianity, air, heaven, heavenly, sky, shall be shaken. It says here to waver, that is agitate, rock, topple, or by implication, destroy. Figuratively, to disturb, incite, move, or shake together. Those things which can and cannot be shaken or stir up. I mean, our, the word tells us about this. Shaken. This is a vibration that is a billow or wave. We look in the side task, 2 Peter 3, verses 10 through 12. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up verse 11 seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness Verse 12, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. We have mention of it in Mark 13, 25, Matthew 24, 29. 
as we just did in the past two studies. And talking about the hearts, we go back to Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus 26, and then we have Hebrews 10, talking about the fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Verse 27, and then, after all this happens, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Coming, that means to appear with power and great glory. You can look over here. Revelation 14, 14, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. That's our Redeemer, our Lord Jesus Christ. When these things begin to become, look up. It says, unbend, that is, rise figuratively, be elated, stoop down. Every knee shall bow when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. And the redemption. Ransom in full is the act. Riddance, Christian salvation, deliverance, redemption. This is when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. Something to loosen with, that is redemption price, atonement, ransom. This is atonement day right here. Isaiah 25, 8, he will swallow up death and victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall be shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. Verse 9, and it shall be said in that day, what day? This is the Lord's day. Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We, we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Here, Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed into the day of redemption. There are those that will take the mark of the beast. And then there are those that are sealed by God with his truth. And will make that stand. They're the ones that will be delivered up before the councils, before Satan and death, as a witness for our Lord Jesus Christ, for his glory. Verse 29. And he spake to them a parable. Now he's going to speak a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. And all the trees. If you're not familiar, he has called in the word, it talks about men being compared to trees. And the fig tree goes back to the Garden of Eden. Verse 30 When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is nigh, now nigh at hand. So when they shoot forth, that is to throw forward, push to the front, germinate. And you know of your own selves that summer, summer is properly to heat. And this is usually right before the harvest. Is even now nigh or already near. Verse 31, 
So likewise, ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Hebrews 10:37. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. This is our Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter 4, 7, But the end of all things is at hand, but be ye therefore sober, and watch unto prayer. Verse 32, Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Jeremiah 24, He's talking about those two baskets of figs. And the generation goes back to an age or an age of time or generation. The period or the persons. And if you think about Jerusalem and Judea, is it goes back to 1947-48 is when Palestine became the nation called Israel. So then you determine what's a generation. We know 40, 70, and 120. And this the 70 year mark is coming up in 2017-2018 verse 33 heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away now he's talking about that heaven and earth age of time and this goes back to that change of bodies as we find in 1 Corinthians 15 to incorruptible spiritual body we go back to Psalms 102 it talks about that body will change it's, it's changed just like a garment we'll switch to, to our incorruptible bodies but some will be raised to the first resurrection with immortal souls it, but then there will be those that will be raised with a mortal soul liable to die and will have to face the second death those who are raised with immortal souls are part of that first resurrection verse 34 and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. Now what day is our Lord Jesus talking about? He's talking about the Lord's day, His day, His return at the second advent. And He's given us warnings. That his day would be as a thief in the night. So, if, if you're not aware, if you're not being watchful about the thief that comes before the Lord returns, then you're going to be deceived by the thief. And Satan is the thief. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. You can look over here in the side task, and there's many scriptures that tie back to what we're that are in verse 34. It talks about your hearts, the suffering, cares that day. It says, Take heed. He's telling us to hold the mind. That is, pay attention, be cautious about. This is specific. Apply oneself to. And this is yourself. This is in your mind. Not what anyone else tells you, but he's telling us specifically to take heed in ourselves. At least at any time, any uh, peradventure at all, your hearts, talking about hearts, it says here that is figuratively the thoughts or feelings in your mind, in your middle, in the middle, be overcharged to burden overcharge it says weighty burdensome gray grievous heavy with suffering and suffering is an interesting word it goes it says properly a headache as a seizure of pain from drunkenness that is by implication a debauch by analogy a glut 
And look right here, what word is associated with this? 726 in the Greek. Harposa. To seize in various applications. Catch away. Pluck. Take. Pull. Take by force. Let's look what this says over here. Deuteronomy 29, 19. It says, And it come to pass, when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart, to add drunkenness to thirst. And in Isaiah 28, I tend to believe that the ten northern tribes of Ephraim, I believe that this represents the United States. Some think it might be Great Britain. What I see is not important. I'm talking about Ephraim, which represents the ten northern tribes that went into captivity by the Assyrian and they were scattered abroad. We're talking about the tribes of Israel, which are the sons of Jacob. And we know that they're still scattered. And if you don't understand this, well, that's another study. But I especially find Isaiah 28 very interesting because it, in my opinion, goes back to what we're seeing in the United States right now with all these false doctrines. There's a lot of pride in people thinking that they're going to, quote, escape tribulation within these different doctrines and that we can find in Ezekiel 13. When you use a King James Version Bible, because other ones have been changed, but you look at all these, I mean, it's just amazing the arrogance of what is being taught. And when we read Isaiah, it says, Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. And if you look, I mean, it doesn't take, you don't have to look far, but I mean, you, you look at the arrogance and the pride of what is going on in this nation, and it is amazing. Well, let's continue reading. Behold, the Lord hath a mighty and strong one, which as a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters, overflowing shall cast down to the earth with the hand verse 3 the crown of pride the drunkards of ephraim shall be trodden under feet i believe that's pretty specific this pride is gonna fall it doesn't take much to go and study what all the prophets, God's holy prophets, went through. They went through tribulation for His namesake. Our Lord Jesus Christ suffered for our sins. He didn't do anything wrong. He was falsely accused. And if we are so arrogant to think that we cannot make a stand for our Lord Jesus Christ, if you think you're going to escape tribulation, we're not talking about God's wrath on the wicked. Understand that there is a difference. But we shall be tested. And that is very plain, plainly written in all the scriptures that we shall be tested. Haven't seen anything yet that talks about, quote, a secret gathering of Christ before his second advent. There's only two. Hebrews 9.28 specific tells us there's only two advents. Anyone that tells you there's a secret gathering in between these two events, they're lying to you. I just find it amazing. It's just unbelievable how simple our Lord's Word is and yet People wish to be deceived. They wish to be drunken with those in their false doctrines. They want to be taken by the first Messiah that shows up. And when you study God's Word, we know 
The first Messiah that comes on the scene is going to be the false Messiah. That's Satan himself, the devil, disguised as Christ. It's specific. Christ warns us in these scriptures through his apostles. I have a study on the word harposa and the word rapture, which is not in God's word under the word rapture. It is there under ravish. If you'll go look up the word ravish, you'll find where the word rapture ties into it. Understand who's being ravished. Who's being drunken? God's word, he tells us, he warns us about not having enough oil. Eliyah, the word of God in your lamp. If you just follow men's doctrines or their traditions and you believe in these false doctrines and you follow that false Christ, when he appears, it's just like uh, we can learn here in 1 Samuel 25, 1 Samuel 25, 36. Here's an example. And Abigail came to Nabal and behold, he held a feast in his house. Like the feast of a king, and Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. And we're not talking about just wine and bebbing. We're talking about drunken with false doctrines. Wherefore she told him nothing less or more until the morning light. So Nabal's heart was all merry, and this is what this false Christ is going to do. He's going to make everybody that is not sealed with God's truth, he's going to make them feel all warm and yummy inside. They're going to think of him as the Savior because he's going to look like, he's beautiful. He's going to look like the Savior and act like the Savior. So therefore, they're going to fall into his trance, into his mark of the beast and think that he is Christ. They're going to tur turn over their own family to him in order when they don't believe him don't believe that he is the Christ that's when the people are going to be delivered up God's elect this is real simple to be betrayed by your own family because they are in the deception and you're sitting there going no this is not the true Christ this is false Christ and they're just going to go oh but but honey it, it, it's really Jesus and no it's not going to be Jesus it's Satan disguises Jesus. The word tells us ex explicitly over and over and over and over again from old to new. It's there. Our Lord is sending Satan as the false Messiah. We know this. It's simple. We know he comes first. 666. Our Lord Jesus Christ does not return until the last trump. Last is the seventh, Revelation 11. So, I mean, it's just up to everyone to believe whatever they're going to believe. It's just where it's at. I, I prefer to believe God's word over some man or some church or some pope or rabbi or preacher. When I can read it myself and I can see the word L-A-S-T, last, Trump. And have enough intelligence to go well where is the last trump and then i go to the book of revelation and i see there's there's seven trumps in there and i know that the last is the seventh it's real simple and then i can read in, in the sixth trump i can see all the evil workings of the serpent and the dragon he comes at the sixth trump and six comes before seven it, it's just that simple. In Isaiah 28, this is a good example of false doctrines. Verse 7, But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink. Strong drink really goes back to like a set-in doctrine or tradition that is just brought forth, that is just cemented in. Are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. It's talking about this false doctrines. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. 
We can go to Isaiah 56. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Verse 11, yea, they are greedy dogs. I mean, you look at some of these uh, TV pastors and all their fancy houses and cars and uh, gold watches and all their little flitting around here on their private airplanes and all this kind of stuff. It says, yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough, and they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain from his quarter. Verse 12, come ye, say they, I will fetch wine. He's, they're going to feed you wine. They're drunken doctrines. And we will fill ourselves with strong drink. Oh, yeah, let's make it semen it in there now. And tomorrow shall be as this day in much more abundant. This is false doctrines brought forth, carried forward. And our Heavenly Father leads us by example. It, it's like an intoxicating wine or strong drink. That is what false doctrines all goes back to. Proverbs 7, the ways of the harlot. It's not talking about a, a female body. It's talking about a religious doctrines on every street corner. All these different doctrines and traditions that, that lead astray God's children, that turn God's children away from the truth and the simplicity of His Word. And when I'm talking about the TV evangelists or TV pastors, I'm talking about those that rely on donations and that kind of thing to supplement their way of life. And a bunch of them come to mind, but I'm not going to say any names. But any moment doctrines that are all wrapped up into pleading and and crying and begging for money and and try to claim that it's for the service of the Lord or to help spread the truth of the Lord when they're teaching false doctrines back to verse 34 and drunkenness which is means intoxication that is the deception of false doctrines in cares, it says, through the idea of distraction or solicitude. It says, to part that is a portion, bestow. It says, to share or figuratively to disunite, defer, deal, be difference between, distribute, divide, give part. In other words, sharing this drunkenness and cares of this life. Relating to the present existence. This is relating to, to spend existence. And so that day come upon you unawares. Unexpected. Suddenly. We know that he is, he, our Lord Jesus Christ has told us many times that that day, let it not come upon you suddenly or unaware. And how would it come unaware is if you're not expecting him because you're already worshiping the false Christ, thinking that this is Jesus, when it's Satan himself disguised. So then when our true Lord comes at the seventh trump, then it's, uh, whoops, you know? Uh, but it's going to be a big whoops. It's going to be that uh, weeping and gnashing of teeth where you're going to want to hide under a mountain or have a mountain fall on you hide yourself from the face of the lord it's that great shame that comes when the true lord when he returns at the second advent we can go to matthew 13 22. this is talking about the sower he also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word 
and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful does that sound familiar and over on the side couch we can look at that day in Luke 12 46 the Lord of that servant will come in a day this is the Lord's day when that servant looketh not for him and at an hour when he is unaware that servants not going to be watching for him and will and what does our Lord do he will cut him asunder and will appoint the servant his portion with the unbelievers if they become drunken with the false doctrines and worship this false Christ they their portion will be appointed with the unbelievers in other words he's gonna count them as heathens and yes then the wrath will pour this goes back to Matthew 24 and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so in the flood of Noah's time the flood came and took them all away who was destroyed not those that were in the ark but it was everyone else the flood came and took them all away destroyed them in the flood and Satan's flood is his lies, his deception, his disguise as false Christ. Looks like the lamb but speaks as a dragon. Really, truly, people, this does not get any simpler. Our Lord has warned us. You want to be taken by the deception and destroyed? That's your choice. Or do you want to, or do you want to remain and make that stand and remain until the end and wait for the redemption of our Lord Jesus Christ when he comes at his second advent. This scripture goes back to Mark 13 also. He tells us to watch. So watch out for that thief that comes in the night. The thief comes to steal, to destroy. I mean, Satan's name is Apollyon. He is that destroyer. He is the desolation. Of a, he is that abomination of desolation. He is the son of perdition. He's already sentenced to die the second death. But we are warned over. He tells us, you know, at least coming suddenly. This is our Lord Jesus Christ. He finds you sleeping. If you're sleeping on watch, that's your destruction. 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 through 4, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Verse 3, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Verse 4, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief and why is that is because our Lord Jesus has warned us about the false Christ coming first that his day will not overtake us if you know in your mind that this first one that shows up this first Messiah is going to be Satan disguised as Messiah so study God's Word for yourself believe his word He's warned us. And I have heard people call our Lord Jesus Christ a thief. And that just makes me so mad. Because our Lord Jesus Christ is not a thief. He's talking about the day. His day come upon you as a thief. I mean, if you're in your house and all of a sudden you hear somebody break through a window, that is the thief breaking into your house. And your house is supposed to be the house of uh, part of our Lord Jesus Christ we're the many membered body of Christ he's telling us to keep our house to guard our house and not allow the thief to come in but if you open your door and let the thief come in and you in, entertain him and and you do the works with him and all that well then this is what's gonna happen he's gonna come back and his your house is broken into 
in Mark 13, it tells us about the master of the house. So the master goes on a long journey and he, he gives instructions to guard that house and all the different things that need to be done within that house. He, get, he leaves instructions. I'm trying to think of a way to maybe explain this in today's terms. It's sort of, and I don't intend to blaspheme our Lord, but just trying to think of a way to explain this. Say you're on a, you, you get hired for a position and your boss gives you a list of instructions or duties. And he tells you, this is the way I want this job done. And so you have the list and we can apply the list and the boss would be our Lord, would be our Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. They give us this list, which are found in the, in the Word. So we have this list of instructions on what we're supposed to do to do our job, to perform our duties. And so we go good for a little while. I mean, we do exactly like he gives us this list of duties. But then we start taking little shortcuts. We start wavering and we start turn, doing, figure out little shortcuts on how to do a specific job. And then the effect of it starts damaging the actual foundation, the, the original instructions. Because we're taking these little shortcuts. And these little shortcuts would be like, if we take it in a religious sense, it would be like uh, a little variance in God's commandments. We, we put a little piece of a false doctrine or put a little tradition of men in there. And then it starts turning away from what was the original instructions that were left for us to follow. And that, and then, okay, so over time, in say all these little instructions, and you know, in our little shortcuts, we get further and further away from the actual instructions to the point where our job suffers. We become unfruitful, and then our boss comes in and goes, "Hey, what, what are you doing? You know, I gave you a list of instructions on how to do this job." And you're, you have wavered way off base here. You're out. You're not even following what I gave you to do. You're doing, you're not doing the job that I hired you to do. And then he fires you. You get fired from your job because you didn't do the job that you were hired to do. That you were put in that position in order to fulfill that job. And that's the best way I can kind of figure how to try to explain this in today's terms where more people can understand it. And our Lord Jesus Christ is going to return at the second advent. And we're all going to be held accountable for the duties and the job that we have, He has set for us to perform. Are we going to follow His instructions? Are we going to deviate and allow, you know, these little shortcuts? Are we going to follow these little shortcuts that basically destroy the list of instructions that he gave us. And we allow and today we allow the false doctrines of men to do that very thing because we're too wrapped up in the cares of the world to go and study his word line by line and precept upon precept. And we're going to allow false words that are not in God's word to totally delude us to destroy his foundation that he gave us in his instructions we allow them to tell us not to study the old testament because oh that that was the old covenant it's done away with that's a lie christ did not change one jot one tittle of the old and then we have the book of revelation we have people saying oh don't read the book of revelation because you're not going to be here what what nowhere does god in god's word does it say that but you know if if you don't want to take the time if you want to get wrapped up into the cares of this life and become drunken with the false doctrines you know that's everyone's choice but we've been warned over and over and over again i don't know how many ways he could have put it i mean our, our lord tells us he loves his children and he's given us all these warnings and he's telling us to read his word 
for ourselves not to believe the false doctrines. We will be held accountable. The church is not the Savior. Rabbis, preachers, pastors, they are not the Savior. We have one Savior, and that's our Lord Jesus Christ. And he has given us warning to take heed. Because we each will be accountable on Judgment Day before our Lord. And we will be judged by our works accordingly. First Thessalonians 5, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Verse 7, For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken, be drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. Goes back to Ephesians 6. Make that stand. Verse 35. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth shall it come so for a snare it says a trap as fastened by a noose or notch a trick temptation shall it come on all them that dwell on the face that means the whole surface of the whole earth. And we can look at Psalms 11, 6. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone in a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. This is on the wicked. It's not on those who make that stand with the Lord. And is it amazing, Ecclesiastes 9.12 also refers to this scripture that we find in the, the New Testament, in the Gospels. For man, Ecclesiastes 9.12, For man also knoweth not his time, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. It says here, Isaiah 24, 18, And it shall come to pass, that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. And Christ tells us in Revelation 16, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So, as a, as a thief suddenly appears, we're talking about the day of the Lord. Verse 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. It says, watch, be sleepless, pray, beg, beseech, make a request, petition always. In other words, put the pride away and understand that the, everyone's going to be here. May be accounted worthy to to deem entirely deserving to escape to run away by implication to shun by analogy to vanish 2 Thessalonians 1 5 which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that ye may be accounted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer Verse 6, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to stand. Ephesians 6 tells us to make that stand. Psalms 1, 5, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners or in the congregation of the righteous.
Ephesians 6, 13 through 14. We're for take unto the whole, you the whole armor of God that ye may be account, be able to withstand in the evil day and have done all to stand. Verse 14, stand therefore having your loins girt about you with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. 1 John 2, 28, and now little children abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Jude 1, 24, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Verse 37, and in the daytime he was teaching in the temple, and at night he went out and abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives. This is our Lord Jesus. So the daytime is, is called the meaning tame. From dawn, dawn to dark he was teaching in the temple, the sacred place. And at night, he went out and abode to pass the night in the mount that is called Olives, Elayah. And we have another on the side task, Zechariah 14, four. And his feet shall stand in that day, the Lord's day, upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. I don't think we'll be able to miss that event. We also have a double witness in Act 1, 12, where our Lord Jesus will return to Mount of Olives. Verse 38, And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple for to hear him. This concludes our study of Luke 21. I hope that it has been a blessing to you. I have learned so very much just by going back and studying these three books so far. And when we take the words back into the original language, how awesome is it to get that deeper meaning and understanding of what our Holy Father and our Lord Jesus Christ was telling us. I hope that the truth of what is written in His Word comes through and that all who, according to the will of our Heavenly Father, that those who shall receive it will be according to his will. I believe from this rapture ready challenge, I believe in my mind it is very obvious. We all shall be here through the tribulation of Satan. All three of these books thus far, these three chapters that we have studied, Matthew 24, Mark 13 and Luke 21, each one is specific. Our Lord Jesus Christ does not return until after the tribulation. I believe this is very obvious. He has revealed this to us and he tells us on top of all of that about the false Christ, he gives us these warnings. And then he tells us all has been revealed. So, I mean, it's up to us. Who are you gonna believe? You're gonna believe people that claim that there's this secret in between gathering when we know Hebrews 9.28 tells us there's only two advents of Christ. And then Christ tells us before he returns at his, his second and last advent, the false Christ will come before him. So if you're being taught to go after this first Messiah that shows up, you're being told to go worship Satan. Because he comes first, 666. And there it is. Please take this to prayer before Heavenly Father. Read His Word. Get a good King James Version Bible in a Strong's Concordance.
Take it all back. Read it. Don't believe just the doctrines of men. You don't want to be in that, uh, on the other side of that door with knocking and him going, I don't know you. Do not want to go there, my friends. Do not want to go there. God bless everyone, and we'll be working on the next video, which will be 2 Thessalonians 2. God bless.